This is Rob with SaveNet AT, and today we're integrating Microsoft SQL Always Encrypted with our SafeNet AT Luna SA HSM for Government. Using the HSM, we'll create a column master key, which will be used to encrypt column encryption keys used by SQL. This will ensure that information entered from the client side is encrypted before it's sent to the SQL database on the SQL server. This means that the client will be able to see decrypted information, but on SQL Server, the database administrator and anyone with access to that machine will only have access to encrypted information. For this demonstration, I have two instances of Windows Server 2016, one running SQL Server and the other running SQL Client. Additionally, I have the Luna Client installed and configured on the SQL Client machine. This will allow the SQL Client Machine access to the HSM to create and access keys. So our first step on the SQL Client is to make sure that we do have the Luna Client installed. We'll open up a command prompt, navigate to C, Program Files, SafeNet, Luna Client, and run VTL Verify. This shows that the connection to the HSM is up and we have access to create keys and access them. We can also use the CMU list command to view the contents of the partition. Currently, this partition that we have access to is empty. Once we finish this integration, we will see a key there. As we go through this process, in order to verify a connection when SQL Server is up and running, we will need to have the Telnet client added to this Windows Server. So here in Server Manager, we'll click Manage, Add Roles and Features, click Next, Select role-based or feature-based installation, selecting the current server. On the first page, we'll just click Next. On the Features page, we'll select Telnet Client, and then click Install. Now that we have the Telnet Client installed, the next step is to install SQL Server Management Studio. This package is available from Microsoft. Once setup completes, we click Close. Now we're still on the SQL Server machine. We need to access Computer Management. You can right-click the Start button and select Computer Management. Here we need to browse to Services and Applications, SQL Server Configuration Manager, SQL Server Network Configuration, Protocols for Microsoft SQL Server. So first, we'll right-click on Named Pipes and choose Enable. Now we'll double-click on TCP IP. Under the Protocol tab, we'll change Enable to Yes. And then on the IP Addresses tab, here we'll scroll down and find the network connection that's being used and change Enabled to Yes. Now we can click Apply Acknowledge the prompt that we'll need to restart the service, and hit OK. The next step, under Services and Applications, SQL Server Configuration Manager, SQL Server Services, we'll right-click on the service SQL Server, and choose Restart. Now we can verify that that port is open correctly by using the telnet command, We'll open a command prompt and use the command telnet, the IP address of the interface for which we enabled this, and the port is 1433. If this connection is successful, the text will disappear. By default, this connection is not echoing any text, but if you type echo space period and hit return, the command prompt will return to normal. Now we need to add two ports to the firewall. So I'll hit Windows and the R key to bring up the run command and type wf.msc. That's the management snap-in console for the Windows firewall. 
right click on inbound rules and click on new rule. Select port and click next. Ensure that TCP is selected and specific local ports and enter 1433 comma 1434. Click next. Make sure that allow the connection is selected. Click next. Ensure that all three options are selected here. Domain, private, and public. Click next. We can give this firewall rule a name. I'll just use SQL and click finish. Now we can launch the SQL Server Management Studio. We'll use the Windows key with R for the run command and type SSMS and hit enter. Once this launches, under server name, click the drop down and click on browse for more. Expand Database Engine and highlight the server host name and then click OK. Now we click Connect. Now in the Object Explorer window, right click on the server name and click on Properties. In the Properties page, we'll click on Security. Under Server Authentication, make sure that SQL Server and Windows Authentication Mode is selected. Then click OK. Now we need to restart the SQL Server services again, so we'll open Computer Management. Services and Applications. SQL Server Configuration Manager. Open SQL Server Services. Then right click on SQL Server and choose Restart. Now back in Server Management Studio, we'll open up Security. Right click on Logins and select New Login. Here we'll create a name for a user. I'm going to use SQL test. Change this option to SQL Server Authentication and enter a password. Now select Server Roles and add the sysadmin role. And we click OK and that completes creation of that user. Now that the SQL Server machine is configured, we're ready to configure the client machine. We've already verified that the Luna client is installed and configured correctly, but we do need to register the KSP, the key storage provider, so that it can be used by Microsoft. For SQL, we'll be using the 32-bit version. So we navigate to C, Program Files, SafeNet, Luna Client, and open the Win32 directory. Then we open the KSP directory and run kspconfig.exe. The first step is to double-click on Register or View Security Library. Click Browse and browse to C, Program Files, SafeNet, Luna Client, Win32. Here we'll select the cryptokey.dll file and then click Register. Now double click on Register HSM Slots. We'll need to do this for two users. The first user will be the administrator user on this machine. We'll make sure the correct slot is selected 
enter the password for that slot, choose register by slot label, and click register slot. We also need to register this for the user system with the domain NT Authority. Again, it'll be the same slot. We'll re-enter the password, register by slot label, and click register slot. We can now close the KSP register utility. On our client machine, we'll also install SQL Server Management Studio using the same procedure as we used on the server. For server name, we'll enter the IP address of our SQL server. For authentication, we'll switch this to SQL Server Authentication. Here, we'll log in using the username and password that we created in SQL Server Management Studio on the server. Now that we're connected to the database, we can create some data. We'll click New Query. This text is available in the printed version of our integration guide. This will create a sample database with some information. Now we can press F5 or click the Execute button to execute this command. And we can retrieve some data by clicking New Query. This text is also available in the guide. And we can see the data in the database. Now for the next step, we'll create a column master key on the HSM. We'll click Refresh in Object Explorer. So now we'll expand the server name, databases, the name of our database, security, and always encrypted keys. Click on column master keys, and we can see there's none listed yet. So we'll right click and select new column master key. We'll give it a name. And here we'll click on the key store drop down and select Key Storage Provider CNG. Then under Select a Provider, we'll select the SafeNet Key Storage Provider. Then we click Generate Key. We see that was created and we can click OK. Now we need to create the column encryption keys. So in Object Explorer, we'll select Column Encryption Key. Right click and select New Column Encryption Key. Here we'll give it a name. For column master key, we'll use the drop down to select the column master key that we created in the last step and click OK. Now in Object Explorer, we'll select the server name, databases, the name of our database, tables, right click on the table name and select Encrypt Columns. This launches the Always Encrypted wizard. On the first page, we click Next. Here we'll select both ID and data. Under Encryption Type, we'll select Deterministic for the ID and Randomized for the data. Click Next, click Next. 
We'll select Proceed to Finish Now and click Next, and then Finish. Once this process completes, we can click Close. Now if we rerun the CMU list command, we'll be able to see the column master key that was created on the HSM. Now that we've encrypted those columns of data, we can verify that the data does show as encrypted. If we run the same query again, we'll see the information for ID and data now are encrypted data. Now for the client to be able to decipher the encrypted data, in Object Explorer, we'll click Disconnect. Then we'll reconnect. But before connecting, we'll click on Options, select Additional Connection Parameters. We'll add the line Column Encryption Setting Equals Enabled. And then we click Connect. Now we'll create a new query. We'll use the same text here. And now we get this option, Parameterization for Always Encrypted. We'll click Enable. And now in the results, we can see that that information has been decrypted. And this completes the integration using the SafeNet AT, Luna SA, HSM for Government, with Microsoft SQL Always Encrypted.